Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we praise Allah, Creator of the heavens and the earth, and we send peace and blessings to all of the Prophets, and especially to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions, and all those who call to his way to the Day of Judgment. And we begin with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sent his followers to the four corners of the earth. And over the centuries, there were high points for Muslims, and there were also low points. Muslims were kings and slaves. And in all different uh, aspects of life, in, in different levels of testing, Muslims who practiced their faith were able to come to the surface you know, as followers of the greatest prophet who ever lived. It is reported in the European slavery that went uh, across from the Atlantic, that as many as 30% of the slaves who came from Africa into the Americas and were taken as political prisoners to the Western Hemisphere were Muslims. Many of these people are still revisiting their roots, and this is making Islam the fastest growing religion in the West. This is a very important topic. We need to go deep into what actually happened to the slaves to try to understand this phenomenon because it is still influencing American society today. It still has a powerful impact upon uh, the shaping of the minds of the younger generation and upon what is happening in the Western countries. Originally, when slavery was practiced in uh, America and in the, this uh, Western Hemisphere, the first slaves were actually the poor whites. But because they could identify with the masters, with the, the upper class, they refused to stay within a state of slavery. Slavery was then changed to the Red Indians, to the native people of America. But the native people were living on their land. And so they refused also to remain in slavery, and either they would sit down and refuse to move until they died, or they would fight to their death and they would escape. So the European uh, colonialists at that time needed to have people who could easily be identified and also were familiar <coughs> with the, the growing of cotton and sugarcane and living within a semi-tropical climate. And so they looked to the west coast of Africa to try to bring in uh, slaves who would fit this role and who would propel um, the culture to give products for the industrial revolution that was about to happen. The first slaves were brought into the New World uh, around 1518. And this was through the Portuguese and uh, the Spanish who gave out licenses in 1518. And then we find slaves coming in. After that point, we find then the Dutch, the British, the French, and all of the colonial um, masters at the time were selling people as you sell uh, chattel. And this slavery continued and increased until the point where millions of people were affected by it. And so we can say that through the slave trade, and through what happened in what is called the Middle Passage in between Africa and the Americas, that millions of people actually met death and destruction, and Africa up until today has not recovered uh, from this terrible genocide that went on. All tribes, all languages, all religions in West Africa were brought together and put onto the slave boats. Ashanti, Koromante, Yoruba, 
Igbo, Wolof. Amongst them were Muslims. Almost one in every three of the slaves being taken to America was Muslim. The Mandinka, the Fulani, the Hausa, and from the Yoruba and Ashanti, those who had accepted Islam also find, found themselves on the boat. In early America, it was also reported that some of the African people who were living in America had slaves, that they owned their own property. But in 1685, the Code Noir, Noir the Black uh, Laws, were written, and in, in, in this, uh, uh, this divisive uh, legislature that was passed, every person of African descent became a slave. And so, with no hope uh, for freedom, resistance became a powerful message amongst the African slaves. And we find that many of the different nations, especially the Muslims, were leading the forces against the slave masters and the colonial regimes. And reports are coming, especially of Mandingos, which is the, the English way of saying Mandinka, from the Mande people. And we know that this is one of the largest uh, uh, language groups and cultural groups in West Africa. And they became the leaders of the resistance in many parts of the Caribbean and in South America. So we find, as some examples, in 1833, um, a uh, female uh, plantation owner, Gertrude Carmichael, she was living in St. Vincent and Trinidad in the Caribbean. She writes within her writings, and these are available today, that many Negro nations are not idolaters, but they are Mahometans. So she used this word Mahomet, which is a crusading word, a Middle Age terminology used for Muslims. Byron Edwards, in his famous history of the West Indies in 1794, he speaks about an old, faithful Mandingo servant. And when he describes him, he said he never forgot his morning or evening prayer. And he used to chant in a very shrill uh, voice, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. Robert Madden, a British magistrate who went to Jamaica during the time when uh, slavery was being abolished, he discovered a society of Muslims living in Jamaica. And Robert Madden had traveled in Turkey and in some of the Islamic lands, so he learned to speak some Arabic. He knew how to greet Muslims and to open up a conversation in the Arabic language. So it is reported that he gathered together a group of the slaves who were about to, to, to be put into a higher level uh, of, of life and to be manumitted from slavery. And he, he recognized something uh, different about them. He, he could see that they were probably Muslims. So he greeted them in Arabic and he said they would have recited the whole of the Quran if I did not tell them to be quiet. He also uncovered amongst them a wathiqa. He uncovered a document that was written in the Arabic language and um, this wathiqa or this document became uh, a very important piece because um, what the document is speaking about, it is calling for jihad, and um, it becomes the basis of a great slave rebellion um, that happened in the years 1821 uh, to 1822. Following this, we find that um, these Mandinka people are living throughout the Caribbean region. In Trinidad, the island of Trinidad, which is off the coast of South America, the Mandingo Society is uh, developed uh, by the slaves, and um, this society is, is developed uh, in order to free slaves, to take them out of bondage and to buy them, and to then uh, allow them to live a free life. Also on the island of Cuba, there was a sizable population of Muslims. Again, Mandingo is a term which is being used for all of the Muslims. In Haiti, which is uh, the French colony, known to be the first major revolution in the Western Hemisphere, between 1753 and 1757, 
one of the leaders of the great Haitian uprising, was Makandal. And Makandal was a Muslim imam. He was a leader. He was a learned person. And he was part of the great revolution of Toussaint Louverture that happened uh, in Haiti. In Suriname, which was the most dangerous colony of the Dutch in that region, and Suriname is what they call today also Dutch Guyana. So it falls in South America. The great revolt against the Dutch slave masters was being led by a general called Arabi. And his lieutenant was called Zamzam, like Zamzam water that we drink uh, in Mecca till Mukarrama. So we find Arabic names being used by people throughout the region. In the Bahamas, who are so famous today for the beautiful beaches, you find on the island of Exuma, you find writings that show a large population of people. And the writings show that these were followers of Mahomet. Now we know that this is a, a Middle Age crusading term uh, that is being used to describe Muslims. So what they were actually saying is that on the island of Exuma, this large uh, portion of the population were Muslims living in the Bahamas. And so documentation like this is coming to the surface all over the Caribbean region. Uh, it is found in South America, in Central America, that shows um, a strong presence of Muslims within this region. And that not only um, were they part of the societies, but they were the leaders in resistance. Islam gave them a strong identity. And so they resisted culturally, they resisted uh, uh, religiously, and it is reported that part of the system to break the slaves was not to allow them to practice their religions. And especially if the slave masters found somebody who prayed or who fasted in the month of Ramadan, that person would be tortured to death in front of the other slaves. If they found somebody who would not eat pork or somebody who would um, uh, refuse to be naked all the time, they would also torture that person. They broke up the families. They made the people change their language. They changed the names of the people from their original um, African names or from the names of uh, uh, Islamic origin, especially if the name was an Arabic. They made the people change their name. And by this, they were able to water down the culture and to dissolve uh, Islam into a large slave population. But the, the, the seeds of resistance remained in the people. And it is through these seeds that we are seeing people on these islands and these regions accepting Islam in the 21st century. Let us return after a few moments and look about an example of one of the greatest slave revolts in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Thank you. 